On May 3, 2023, Matt Hamilton, who had previously held a position of prominence as an executive at Ripple, made a statement that caused a stirring. He disclosed the efforts that Ripple has been making to develop a dedicated XRP ledger that is optimized for digital currencies issued by central banks. Hamilton provided some information regarding cryptocurrency companies who are now working on improving a private variant of the XRP ledger for those digital currencies that are backed by the state. His views carried a lot of weight because he had previously served as the head of developer relations at Ripple. But questions were raised. On this covert ledger, did the value of XRP correspond to what the general public believed it to be? Alternatively, was it something completely different? One of the most well-known venture capital firms, Black Swan Capitalists, asserted that they had perused this exclusive ledger. They also shared photos displaying the astronomical price of XRP on this elusive site, which was $327,000, which sparked a frenzy of rumors from the beginning. Greetings and thank you for visiting Shiba Inu Land, your one-stop shop for anything and everything pertaining to XRP. In the event that you are new to this site, be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell in order to receive the most recent information regarding all of our XRP discussions. Having fun with my content? Show your appreciation by giving that thumbs up and feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. As a result of this discovery, a raging debate ensued on the true price of XRP on this private version, as well as the mere existence of the ledger itself. On the other hand, this is when things start to get complicated. Recently, we were fortunate enough to come across a podcast segment that made reference to the Republic of Palau. Is it important to know this? It is essential to take note of the connection that Ripple and the Republic have already created, particularly due to the fact that the two companies were the driving force behind the world's first stablecoin trial that was built on the XRP ledger. According to the theory, these stakeholders ought to be aware of the XRP price that is recorded on this secret ledger, as well as the more specific information on its existence. Over the course of today's program, we will solve this enigma. A video clip that features none other than the Minister of Finance of the Republic of Palo is about to be made available to you. Be sure to get comfortable because he delves deeply into the discussion on public versus private ledgers, the basis for their stablecoin, and the potential worth of XRP in the future. So let's get right down to the video clip. We made the decision to use the public XRP ledger. First and foremost, because of its openness, it has always been of the utmost importance that we communicate our ongoing projects and milestones in an open and honest manner. Up until this point, the voyage has been very satisfying. It is pioneering work, a trial, and an experiment, despite the fact that it is not without its difficulties. From the beginning to the end, Ripple's assistance has been of great assistance in overcoming these obstacles. When the video comes to a close, it becomes clear. The public ledger was clearly given priority by the Finance Ministry of the Republic of Palau due to the fact that it features openness. Nevertheless, their statement does not make any affirmative or negative statements regarding the existence of a private ledger. I am left the door slightly ajar in preparation for its possible actuality. A lot of people are interested in knowing how much XRP is stored on this reported private ledger. At this very moment, we are going to broadcast a small audio clip that we have obtained from another podcast. On this covert site, this will shine light on the speculative price of XRP, which is now being traded. The possibility of the public and private ledgers coming together is an idea that is gaining traction and is currently being discussed. Should this be true, it would allow for the consolidation of their prices, resulting in an average. However, this is still a matter of speculation because there is no concrete evidence to support it. David Short, who is popularly known as Ripple's chief technology officer, appeared during the course of these conversations. Let's investigate the price that is expected to be displayed on the private ledger for XRP. Although it is not a definitive statement, it does offer an insight into the possible price that the private ledger could assign to XRP. I have often emphasized this point, and I will do so once more. It is necessary to have a private ledger due to the sheer complexity of the situation. This is not something that was just conjured up out of thin air. This was something that I personally saw in a video that was uploaded to YouTube and broadcast live from Japan. Additionally, the presence of a public ledger is demonstrated by the five minute video clip that was presented. What is the true difficulty now? The XRP private ledger and the public ledger both contain notes. How do they differentiate between the two? 
there is no possible way to emphasize how difficult this undertaking is. For all of these specifics, let us not lose sight of the main point I am trying to make. I sincerely believe that there will come a day when the lines between public and private ledgers will become blurry, that they will merge into one. On the horizon, there will be a convergence. However, before we can see that day, we need regulations that are both strong and unambiguous. Consequently, this eliminates any possibility of confusion in the event that they finally work together. That they are still in the experimental phase with their private ledger is what I have gathered from my observations. Adding a huge new dimension to this story is the Bank of Japan, which is now being discussed, also known by the acronym SBI. Recently, they made public their plan to engage in the business of lending XRP. It is not a trivial subject at all. A clear indication that key companies in the financial industry have taken a great interest in XRP is provided by this signal. With the introduction of this brand new loan service, the bank is putting more emphasis on its objective of utilizing XRP for institutional transactions. In addition, this raises the question of why Japan would engage in XRP loans if they did not believe that the cryptocurrency would play a significant role in the future. When you take into consideration the strategic move that the Bank of Japan has made, the position that I am expressing becomes extremely convincing. Following the completion of a large number of tests and the determination of the appetites of both individuals and institutions for XRP, they are now considering lending it. It is not merely a practice of lending money. The banking industry is employing this tactic as a strategic maneuver to capitalize on the growing popularity of Bitcoin. The speculative value of XRP is not the only thing that makes it useful. For retail customers and for business-to-business -business transactions, it is a potential instrument for conducting international transactions on a vast scale over international borders. Currently, we are observing a tremendous shift in paradigm. The holdings of XRP by financial institutions are not limited to. Through the incorporation of it into functional utility initiatives, they are capitalizing on its promise to provide smooth payments across international borders and transfers within specific institutions. Neither is this a one-time phenomenon that is unique to Japan. International banking behemoths are coming together. As an illustration, consider the structured cooperation that Ripple and MasterCard have established. There is more to MasterCard than just a card corporation. In the realm of payment processing, it is a giant that possesses an extensive network of subsidiary firms. Through the establishment of this collaboration, Ripple is not only establishing a connection with MasterCard's principal division, but also with its other subsidiaries, such as Fluency. A large number of additional systems, including Consensus, ESAC, and Davrith, are not even mentioned here. Rather than only being an endorsement, their collaboration is more than that. This highlights the liquidity as well as the potential size. Their major discussion, which was not without foundation, suggested that MasterCard's work with Ripple had a single strategic purpose, which was to use Ripple as a primary payment conduit from the very beginning of their partnership. Allow me to be clear. Conjecture and speculation are what I am going to share with you here. I'm going to give you everything that's available to you. The news information and buzz that is now going around. Please keep in mind that my understanding of the possible reasons why MasterCard would have collaborated with XRP is just that an interpretation, a theory. I request that everyone remember this. You are correct, they did work along with Ripple. In addition, it is common knowledge that the architecture of Ripplenet is designed to take advantage of on-demand liquidity, which is primarily driven by the XRP coin and its shared ledger. Therefore, if they use Ripplenet, they are essentially utilizing XRP. This is obvious from the previous sentence. To put this into perspective,